This is my iPod 5th gen. I actually really like it even though generally I dislike Apple products. But it does have one problem, the right audio channel keeps cutting out. I've been looking around trying to get a replacement for it and I haven't found one but actually I have something a bit better. I got an entire other iPod. This is one of the later aluminum models. But I thought what I could do is take the internals of the old one and swap them in because I do like the look of the new one better. This new one I got for really cheap for just around $15 but that's for a good reason. Someone tried taking it apart before they sold it to me. Well the back case is completely bent out of shape but thankfully we should be able to just use the old one. For now we can just set this one aside and get to opening up the 5th gen. These gloves do look weird but we're gonna be handling the LCD in this so I don't want to take any chances with leaving fingerprints on it. To open this up I'm actually gonna use a razor blade because it's wide and has a very thin edge. We'll start undoing the clips from the side. Once I have an opening I'll actually use a plastic pick so I don't damage anything. And just like that we're in. I definitely didn't struggle with that. First of all we should unplug the battery connector. And now we can just flip it like this so we can have better access to the internals. Let's start taking the hard drive out. We just have to unlatch this small black plastic part and pull the ribbon cable out. With that out of the way now we can get to unlatching the headphone jack flex cable. And we can carefully unstick the battery from the back case. Now that we got to this point, we can take the parts and start swapping them into this. First of all I'll need to swap the headphone jacks around since the new back case is all bent out of shape. This part was really painful for me because of the screwdriver that I used so I'm just going to fast forward through it. Next what we have to do is take the motherboard, the LCD and click well out of this one and swap them onto the mainframe and faceplate of the other one. We'll need to take out these tiny screws on the side here so we can actually separate the faceplate from the mainframe. And now we can go in with a pick or spudger to take them apart. Once the parts are swapped around we can give the LCD a bit of a clean and put the new faceplate on it. After this it's a matter of just putting the screws back on and we can get to putting back the hard drive and battery too and see if this thing still works. Hey, it's been a week since then. Well, the case is swapped and the iPod works fine. And to be honest, it does feel pretty nice. But there are some things I need to mention. Well, the most important one would be the center button. While it still works, it does have quite a bit of play to it. And well, while the center button doesn't feel quite as nice as it did before, but it's still completely usable. It doesn't really spin around or get out of place at all. Another thing I'd have to mention is the click wheel itself and the way it actually fits into the case. If we look at it from up close like this you can see there's a bit of a gap there. It actually sticks out just a bit. But that isn't really something that would affect you using it. Lastly, for me at least, the menu button doesn't quite click like it did before. And even though it doesn't sound the same, as far as I've been told it worked just fine. I haven't noticed any missed clicks or anything like that. So that being said, I'm actually very happy with how this turned out. I really like the aluminum front plate and though I know it will be harder to open, I'd say the curved design that this has and just the way it looks in general is a lot nicer. Another thing that I've noticed is that the display also looks quite a bit better now. 
I'm guessing this is both because this is a thinner piece of material here, but the case I've had before was also quite scratched up, so it makes sense. And well, this is what I had to say about the case of itself, but the whole reason I started this project was another one. I, I bought the new iPod and did the whole swap and all this just to replace the headphone jack, and I have bad news. It turns out this thing is broken, and yes, I do feel like an idiot for not even checking it before I did all that, but in the meantime I have looked a bit into it. What I've been able to find is that the jack itself seems to be just fine, however this part, the flex cable that goes to the motherboard has a break in it somewhere, so we could test this actually by plugging in an aux cable. Each of the segments that we can see here on the headphone jack actually connects to one of these points on the back, so if we use a multimeter we can actually see whether it's making a good connection or not. So ground seems to work just fine, same for the left channel, and if we get to the right channel this works fine as well. So, so far so good, but if we were to test the connection between these points and the ones at the end of the flex cable, we wouldn't get any connection on the right channel. I'm not gonna do that right now because it's a bit tedious, you'll just have to take my word for it. And well, because of that, this iPod's journey isn't over. And I decided that, you know what, since I'm going to have to order the headphone jack from China anyway, I might as well take this whole thing and flash mod it. What's funny is that this iPod actually came with this adapter board included, besides its own hard drive, so it feels like it was almost meant to happen. Well, I'm pretty excited to get this iPod working and to get it working better than it has up until now. The parts are already on the way, I'm still waiting for them. I also want to replace the battery in this because the one I have is a bit old and may give out pretty soon, but I'll have to see if it shows up in time for the upgrade. I do plan on recording whenever I do the flash upgrade and I think it will be interesting because I decided to get the cheapest parts possible, so we'll see about that. There are a few things that we need to do as far as I know in order to get that working. But up until then I found something pretty interesting that I want to showcase in the next video. So with this being said, thank you for watching if you've made it this far. I am a bit bummed out about the headphone jack but hey, I get to upgrade all of this. And the case does look really nice, I really do like how the black and grey looks in the end. Have a good day and I'll see you next time.